Yeah, Tom, thanks very much. Uh, you've just said that this story is dominated this afternoon. Let me tell you, it's dominated the northeast and particularly Newcastle for the last 17 weeks. It's the last thing the Newcastle United supporters wanted to hear this afternoon, that the takeover essentially has fallen through. The Saudi-backed consortium led by Amanda Staveley, who had agreed that £300 million price tag with Mike Ashley a way back at the beginning of April, have essentially pulled the plug for those reasons um, that you said. When, of course, we heard the statement from them earlier. I've also told you that Newcastle United, as a club, were, were amazed. They were surprised. They had no idea the statement uh, from the potential buyers was set to come today. But it's left the supporters here at Newcastle uh, in a state of shock. And I'm joined by one of them. It's Matthew Renton from the Magpie Channel. And Matthew, um, I know you guys have lived and breathed this, as I have said there, for the last 17 weeks. Um, just tell me, try and sum up how you're feeling this afternoon. I think it's uh, heartbreaking for every Newcastle United fan, to be honest, because the club's been in limbo for, what, 14, 16 weeks now? Now the club's dead, to be honest. No Newcastle fan wants to face another season here, another tenure. Mike Ashley, another the usual no hope, no ambition, relegation battle every year. Um, I think it's been an absolute force from the Premier League. A disgrace and a shambles by Keith Masters in the Premier League. It seems as if they've got what they've wanted. The Saudis have pulled out without them having to make a decision, which they've took way too long to do. Why has it took this long? We need answers on that. Um, and for us to... So now we'll be facing, like I say, no passion season next year, nothing to aim for. It's, it's heartbreaking, utterly heartbreaking. I mean, they may as well keep the games behind closed doors next year because I don't think any Newcastle fans are going to want to come here. Yeah, I can hear the, the pain in your voice. Did you feel, though, as the weeks went on and on, that this was set to, to come? Were you not half expecting this news? I don't think so. I think I was always caught up in the fact that they had to make it look like they were obviously doing the right due diligence, the right checks and whatnot, that it was going to come through because of obviously all the positive signs we heard early on and throughout we heard there's no red flags, there's no red flags. It just seemed like they were waiting for the Premier League finish, season to finish for the transfer window to start and then surely we'd get some answers because we still obviously haven't heard what, what the hold it was, was the piracy, this and that, but at the end of the day we thought if it wasn't going to happen, why has it took this long to get there? And obviously the Saudis' patience is war thumb, which is a, a huge... Heartbreaking loss to every Newcastle United fan because, like I say, we're stuck now with an owner that doesn't, doesn't care at all about this club. I need to ask you this, and it's a very sensitive topic, but a lot has been said, one, about the piracy, as you mentioned, but also the human rights record, the poor human rights record over in, in Saudi Arabia. Can you understand why the Premier League, assumably, as a result of those two things, were really taking their time to come to a decision, and I suppose haven't yet? Not this long. No, it kind of take that long to understand that. And if the Premier League, along the likes of other organisations like boxing, for example, Anthony Joshua has just had a fight in Saudi Arabia, I kind of see that the problem with, it, with them taking over this. Obviously, whatever's going on in that country is of huge issues, but it, that's not our issues. We're, we're regular football fans who, yeah, we come week in, week out, want to see how our club do well. That, that's another part of the world. I mean, if you look at every billionaire, I'm sure you'll find some dirty things about them. Yeah. Has it, in some ways, has this kind of got you through this pandemic these last few months? I know it's been difficult and a lot of you guys are struggling mentally because you've been so desperate for it to happen, but with the hope that there might have been some sort of gold at the end of the, the rainbow mm -hmm. and it might have happened, has it got, got you through this? And, and how does it feel now knowing definitely that's it? As a YouTuber in the early stages, it helped us massively to have something to do and talk about, even at home, interacting with fans on the likes of StreamYard and Zoom. But now this whole saga has just completely sucked the life and passion out of me for football. I've just got no desire now to even watch football next season. The thought of coming here next season is, is, is heartbreaking for me. I mean, like, like I say, there's just, there's just nothing to aim for, nothing to hope for. You look at this club on this day in 1996, St. Alan Shearer, we've done nothing of note since, and we'll do nothing to make Ashley. Do you take any solace at all from the fact that you now know and you've got the transfer window. It's just opened up on Monday. Steve Bruce is there. It looks as though the club will buy some players. To what extent and value, we do, don't know. But do you take any solace from the fact that at least you know now and it's not dragging on until the end of the window when you might not do too much business? Not considering the scouts last year decided Joe Linton was worth £40 million. To be honest, I think St Maxim will go. He's been the miracle. If we keep him, it'll be another miracle. I can't see him staying at this club when they're fighting 17th every year. 
Um, it's good that it's at least early and there's still we've got, we've got a look. There's only six weeks until the, the season starts again. With the whole COVID-19, there's rumours of about £30 million to spend. That gets you absolutely nothing these days. No one's going to want to stay. Like I say, I think the likes of St Maximum and De Brafka will probably go. Um, and no disrespect to Steve Bruce and the boys. They've done some valiant efforts this season. He's done the best he can probably do with what he's got to work with. But, like I say, our Newcastle fans, we're not wanting to come back here and watch nil-nils and snatch and grab last-minute Stockish time wins next season. There's, there's nothing to play for. Um, Matthew, thanks very much for your, for your time this afternoon. Sure. Um, I know it's a, a difficult situation for you, and I think Matthew speaks for a lot of the Newcastle United supporters who, let me tell you, for the last few months, everywhere you go, they all want to know what's happening with the takeover. Is it going to happen? Is it not? I think they all hoped that eventually, the longer it went on, it would eventually be passed through. Um, would it ever have happened? I suppose we will never know. But the Saudi-backed consortium, led by Amanda Staveley, uh, has this afternoon, in a story broken by Sky Sports News, uh, pulled the plug on that deal and I think Matthew just kind of sums up exactly how the Newcastle United supporters are feeling about that right now. Yeah, okay Keith, thank you.